Hello, my name is Timothy, and this is Computer Aided and Destruction. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use some screencasting software. In particular, we're going to look at Active Presenter 8. Now, just as a side note, I'm using Microsoft PowerPoint to make this screencast. So, in the next video, I will cover how to make a screencast using Microsoft PowerPoint. Let's get started by opening up a web browser. And you want to go to the website at tomisystems.com. That's A T O M I S Y S T E M S.com. Alternatively, you could go to google.com or DuckDuckGo or your search engine of uh, choice and type in Active Presenter 8, and it should take you to this website. Now, this is the company's um, homepage, so I'm going to click the icon for Active Presenter. And this is the software that we want to download. Not only can you use it to make a screencast, but, uh, but the software also has a video editor built in. So you can make crops to your screencast to get rid of parts that you don't like. You can also import additional MP3 and MP4 files and other types of files into your presentation. So if you have collaborators um, working in different parts of the country or the world, they can send you their files and you could Frankenstein it together and make a really cool presentation. Now, one great thing about this software is that it's completely free. If you use it for personal um, nonprofit reasons, if you want to put this on, make a video, put it on YouTube and monetize it, then you should really use the honor code and purchase the software. It's uh, pretty good and it's worth having, I would say. So now I'm on the downloads page. You want to look for the most uh, current version. As of the time of this recording, that is 8.5.1. It might be on version 9 by the time you see this. So you want to click download. You want to download the execute file that's going to go to your downloads folder. Then you want to double click that and run through the installation process. For the purposes of this video, I'm not going to do all of that. I already have it installed on my machine. So I'm going to open it up. And you have different options for the kind of uh, screencast that you want to make. Record video is the most basic recording that you can do. and that is sufficient for our purposes. So that's what I'm going to click. I have my audio on so I can have narration. I'm using a blue snowball for my microphone. That is a condenser mic. A condenser mic is worth having. It really cuts down on um, some of the outside noise and just some of the white noise that you will pick up with a lesser quality microphone. So. If you're interested in doing webcasting or if you just want to have a really good microphone for um, teleconferencing, I suggest getting a condenser microphone. Whether it's Blue Snowball, some people like Yeti, there are a lot of different brands out there. I don't have my webcam plugged in, so I'm not going to use that. Now, the first thing I want to do is click Custom to select my screen area. If you notice this blue box, this is for Active Presenter 8. If I don't want to record my whole screen, I could just move it around and just record like a small corner of my screen. But I want to record everything that's on my desktop. I'm not going to include my taskbar at the bottom of the screen. And then I'm going to go ahead and click record. Well, okay, one other thing you want to pay attention to is the volume. You want to talk into your microphone and make sure that the levels aren't too high. If I stood, I'm pretty far from my microphone. I'm about a little, maybe 14 inches away from it, a little over a foot. So if I just got really close to it and started screaming and the volume was in the red, I would lower the volume here just so I can, uh, just so the levels aren't too high because you don't want your audio to be really distorted. 
So it would be better for you to just back away from your mic a little bit if it's in the red. So I'm going to go ahead and click record. You get a little countdown. I haven't put too much thought into what I'm going to do now that I'm making a screencast. I'm going to go ahead and just open up Microsoft Paint. It's always fun to make some artwork. So let me grab some Van Dyke Brown, make some squiggly lines, grab some purple, grab the paint bucket, maybe some reds, maybe I'll grab a shape. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. It looks really ugly. So I'm going to close this out. I'm not going to save it. And that concludes our screencast. Active Presenter 8. So you want to go to your taskbar, you want to look for the Active Presenter icon, click it, and then you want to click Stop. And now we're in the editing phase. We have our screencast, it's only about it's less than a minute. I'm surprised it's that long to be honest. So if I click play, I can hear the audio, the narration that I was doing while recording in my headphones, but I don't have Microsoft PowerPoint configured to um, record system audio as well as the audio from my microphone. So let me stop the playback. Let me grab the, uh, the marker on the timeline and I'll put it right around seven and a half seconds because the first seven seconds is just me talking and since you guys can't hear it let me select the audio and then let me click this split audio video objects and that's cut my audio right in two and then I'm gonna click the piece that I don't want click delete now having just seven seconds of video with no audio is kind of pointless so let me click the video let me crop the crop it right there as well and delete that part so let me click the audio track let me hold the control key down on my keyboard click the video track to select both and then I'm going to drag this to the beginning of the timeline and that gets rid of some of the fluff in the video at the start of the video and we're pretty much starting almost directly into paint now let's say there are some bits and pieces in here that I don't want let me put the playhead at, let's say at 12 seconds to 16 seconds, I want to get rid of it. So again, I'll select the audio in the video, use the split tool, let's go to 16 seconds, split it again, and then I can take this and delete it, or I could actually just move it to the end of the timeline or somewhere else. I'm just going to delete it. Now let's say I want to add a soundtrack into the background. What I'll do is click insert in the main menu and then I can click audio to add an mp3 file. I'm sure it supports other um, file extensions besides mp3. Like I'm sure it supports WAV files and WMAs, but for uh, for now, I'm just going to use an MP3. I have one on my desktop called Hello. It's just me saying hello. It's only about three seconds long. So I'll put that at the beginning of the video. Let's just pretend this is actually music, three seconds of music. So let's right click it, copy it, and then let's paste it. Paste it again. So if you wanna, if I wanted to have this like background music playing, there might be a way to loop it, but I don't really have time. I, I don't really use the software, to be honest. When I edit videos, I use Adobe Premiere. So I'm not as familiar with this um, platform as I would be Adobe Premiere. So I'm sure there's a way to loop a sample of audio 
but I'm not going to take the time to figure it out right now. I'm going to leave that to you. The purpose of this video is just to show you how to make some really quick edits. Now, if I want to add some like text to the screen, I would click the text caption box. And then I can say something like, uh, this is the paint bucket tool. And then I could add maybe an arrow going from the text box to the paint bucket icon. So let's grab a shape. Let's grab this arrow. Let's go from here to here. Now, it would probably be helpful if I filled in the shape of this uh, text box. Not really sure how to do that. Let's get a fill solid black. It's not good because the text was black. Let's try blue. So there you go. If all this fails, just experiment. You just play around with the software until you figure it out. I just want to admit properties. And there's a fill icon. I get it. Um, use a gradient if I wanted to, but that's not good. If I want to have a, a line around the border, we can do that. But I'm going to leave it up to you to experiment with some of the different tools and features of the software. What you want to do is just look through your timeline, look at the different layers on your um, presentation, decide do I like something or not. If I want to get rid of it, just click it and click delete. If you want to move this to a different point in the timeline, just grab it and drag it to the left or right. And uh, I think we're pretty good. Let's go ahead and save the project by clicking Active Presenter, Save As, give the project a name. I'll just call it Test Project. Click Save. Now let's go ahead and export it. As I was saying earlier, if you export a video, it's not going to have a watermark. If you export it in some of these other formats like HTML5 or SCORM, it will give you a watermark. HTML5 is basically going to turn this into like, um, kind of like a web page. If you use SCORM, this would be great for e-learning. Like, let's just say you have an online class and you're using, I don't know, Desire to Learn or you're using Moodle or some other learning management system. You would want to download this package as SCORM and then you can upload that to your online class and include this as a little module as part of a module anyways you can make it like a video presentation or a lecture or if you added some quiz questions like a multiple choice quiz question you can actually do all of that with the software it's it's pretty good software i haven't experimented with everything yet but the fact that it's offering you all of these different features is great. So I'm going to export this as a video. We called it test project, so it's going to create a folder on my desk on my desktop called test project. And the file itself will be called test project.mp4. If you don't want mp4, you have some different alternatives. I'm not 100% sure if they will all be watermark free but I know mp4 is because I've tested it out and then I could click OK and it'll save but that's not really necessary and that concludes this part of the lecture thank you for watching this video stay tuned for part two